quick background, the Labor Code Private Attorney General's Act of 2004, known as PAGA, some affectionately called the Sue Your Boss Law, which allows uh, aggrieved employees to bring a civil action to recover civil penalties that ordinarily would be assessed and collected by the labor commissioner. So if you can imagine how you would feel as an employer, if you got a letter from the labor commissioner saying they wanted to come and you know, audit your business and potentially assess penalties, well, on, under PAGA, instead of the labor the deputy labor commissioner, it might be that uh, dishwasher that you hired and worked for like two weeks and then you just never showed up again. Um, an aggrieved employee under PAGA could be any person who was employed by the alleged violator and against whom one or more of the alleged violations was committed. That could be a current or former employee, and frequently it's a former employee, and you know sometimes a, a very short tenured employee. Uh, but if the plaintiff can establish just one violation as to him or her, uh, PAGA gives the plaintiff you know, what we we'll call standing to pursue penalties for the same types of violations or for different violations as to all of your other employees. And standing is gonna be a key thing that we're, we're talking about today. What gives the, the plaintiff the right, what circumstances give them the right to bring a PAGA action against you? And what's the scope of that PAGA action they can bring? Uh, PAGA has a one-year statute of limitations and it does have some pre-litigation notice requirements. So the first thing you're gonna First clue you're going to have that there's a potential PAGA lawsuit is you're going to get a letter by certified mail from uh, the plaintiff or plaintiff's counsel, which will also go to the state agency called the LWDA. There is a limited opportunity under PAGA to cure some violations, so it's really important when you if you get that letter. Hope you don't, but if you do, very important to you know immediately review it with legal counsel uh, to see if there's something that can be cured to head off a lawsuit. Uh, and PAGA claims while they're representative and that the employee can sue on behalf of other employees, uh, PAGA claims are not subject to the same class action procedural rules uh, that a, a class action is. So uh, pre thinking if we want to get a sense of how that law or how that ruling changed uh, the state of play, Let's consider a PAGA action versus a class action. And so if you have an employee who signed your arbitration agreement in your new hire packet, uh, and then later on went in and filed a wage and hour class action lawsuit against you, uh, in California, the, the law was and still is that a pre-dispute class action waiver in the arbitration agreement was enforceable so, or, and is enforceable. So if you have an arbitration agreement that says that the employee waives their right to bring a class action and they can only sue in their individual capacity and it has to be an arbitration, courts will, will generally enforce that. So if you bring, if the employer files a motion to compel arbitration, the typical result was that the court would order the plaintiff's individual claims to arbitration and dismiss the class claims. And I say typical because, you know, there's certainly lots of defenses from, you know, I didn't actually sign that agreement to it wasn't fair. And, you know, that's really why you want to stay for Benita's portion telling you how to really uh, have the best practices to make your, sure your arbitration agreement is, is as, as solid as can be. So compare that with the class action to the PAGA action. And prior to Viking River, uh, the law in California was that a pre-dispute PAGA waiver in an arbitration agreement was not enforceable. So if you file that same motion to compel arbitration, the typical result would be that the court would order plaintiffs' individual claims, if they brought any, to arbitration, but would deny the motion as to the PAGA claim. So the PAGA claim would proceed in court regardless of the arbitration agreement. Uh, although sometimes the court might stay the PAGA action while the arbitration is, is ongoing, but you know that's not necessarily the case. And so as you can see, because of this state of play, PAGA claims became very popular with plaintiff's counsel, wage and hour plaintiff's counsel, because of you know, the fact that it was not subject to arbitration agreements.